So, I have got uh, 40 minutes or so. Um, I'm going to go reasonably fast, um, so I've got a few things to cover, but, but quite a lot of it is more get, make, getting you familiar with some, some ideas. Um, I'm going to start, though, with a, a, a critique, and this is a bit unfair for, for not being an IT person, but a critique of the IT function. Recent bit of work done, published in July this year by McKinsey, on the performance and effectiveness of IT functions, and the scores <laughs> given to IT functions from non-IT people are not very good news. So nearly half of the people not, not involved in IT who use your services um, are uh, somewhat or very dissatisfied. Uh, and uh, it gets worse when you look at the issues that um, Rob was raising in terms of the challenges that are, that are coming up um, in terms of uh, transformation, digitalization, um, innovation, analytics, and, um, and online um, uh, you know, digital experience. Uh, so I guess we would have to say that from the user's perspective, IT is not perceived to be performing that well at the moment. The report goes on to argue that one of the core reasons for this is um, poor operating models in IT. And, but this is the, the IT people speaking, saying strengthening our IT's operating model has been a top two cause of poor performance for two years in a row. I guess it's not the effort to strengthen the IT's operating model, but the need to strengthen IT's operating model. Is at, is at the root of the, um, uh, some of the poor performance ratings. Uh, so I think the, the, the reason for showing that was not to, uh, um, to kind of put me above the, the challenges that you are facing, but rather to, to uh, explain that this is a topic, this op IT operating model is a topic worthy of real deep thought. Um, what I'm going to do then is to talk about what is an operating model. Um, I'm then going to uh, um, offer some perspectives on what I think are the challenges when you're trying to design an IT operating model. And at the end, I'm going to offer kind of a one slide thought on what, where I think some of the uh, solution may lie. So what is an operating model, um, and, and how do you design one? For um, for most of us, the operating model is the engine of an organization, whether it's a business or a charity or an IT function, that enables that organization to deliver value to its stakeholders. So it's the, the work that you do in the organization and the technology that you use and the processes that you use to deliver, create and deliver some value to, um, uh, to stakeholders. Now, in, in practice, it's a little bit more complicated than that because most um, uh, people who use the term operating model include the employees and the suppliers as part of the operating model, but exclude the customers and the value proposition, the offer that you give to the customers, and obviously the, the owners as not part of the operating model. So for most people, they're, they're blue the bigger blue circle is really what we mean by operating model. And the way I'm going to define it will also include um, employees and suppliers as part of the operating model. Which, of course, means you, your starting, good starting point is to think about the stakeholders and think about which of those stakeholders are customers and which of them are you know, employees and suppliers. And that isn't always an easy, easy task, because you may have people who are who are uh, both customers and, and employees, and so you may have to consider them to be wearing two different hats. Um, what are the pieces of the operating model? So if, uh, I use a, uh, a mnemonic polism, um, and starting with processes, the work that needs to be done to deliver the value to the customers. So that's, the, that's my definition of the P. Then there's the, the people who do that work and the organization that they live in and the structures and the cultures and the decision rights and so on uh, th who are doing the work. There are then the locations where that work is done. Where are those people located and where are their, their, their equipment and, and support located? There is the information solutions 
that uh, are needed to support the work, and sometimes the information solutions are the work, and so there's an, an issue there. Um, there is suppliers who will feed uh, inputs into the work, and then there's a management system for running the work and the people um, and continuously improving it and, um, and uh, reformulating it. So for me, this is the operating model. And um, this, uh, this book has a pretty picture of a operating model canvas, and the title is Operating Model Canvas, which captures these six elements in a canvas format, which enables you to capture very high-level thoughts on a single page, so that you can kind of produce a one-page operating model. Um, I'm going to take you through this in a little bit more detail. So first is the work that needs to be done to deliver value to the customer or beneficiary. So very important when you're doing operating model work is who are the customers and beneficiaries? What is it that we're trying to do for them? And what, is the work, what work do we have to do in order to make them happy, in order to create the smiley face at the end of the, the value chain or value stream or high-level process, whatever language you want to use here? or service delivery chain. Then there is the, the people who are going to do that work and the organization that they, that they live in, the structure that they live in, who reports to whom, what decision rights each uh, uh, department and each individual may have, what uh, process ownerships uh, uh, exist, and um, uh, if, even things like people models and cultures, all of that is part of the organization box in, in the canvas. The, the information box is the place for thinking about the information solutions that are needed to support the processes that are, that are delivering the work. Um, and of course, as I pointed out, some of those processes will be an information step in their, in their own right. Um, suppliers, um, the, the supplier box is for uh, thinking about the the types of suppliers that you need and the sort of relationship that you should have with those suppliers, uh, whether you need a collaborative relationship or whether you can have a transactional relationship or whether you need a joint venture, a partnership in some form. Um, and then the locations box is uh, about the where. Where is the work um, to be done? Now, there are some connections here with, uh, with TOGAF, but I haven't been influenced by... by, by uh, um, you know, or I'm more, more I'm thinking of the Zachman framework, the connections here, but, but I haven't been influenced by that in, in putting this together because I came at this problem from a business perspective of operating models and have become more interested recently in, in the challenge of IT operating models. The last bit is the management system, which kind of underpins these uh, top five, these core pieces, which is the, the, the calendar of meetings that you need to design to do the strategic planning for the organization, to do the budgeting for the organization, to do the performance uh, uh, appraisal and approval and, 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 and management of the organization, to do continuous improvement and, and, and things like that, as well as the scorecard that you use to measure the performance of your organization. And those are the topics in, in management system. So these are the, the six pieces that I think are important to uh, have aligned, aligned obviously with the strategy, and aligned with each other to have a, an effective operating model. The book, um, and the inside of the book, uh, is, is designed to be accessible and easy to use. Um, uh, let me make a connection with the, the business model canvas, because I think this is, this is relevant, because the business model canvas is quite was very widely used and is uh, I, in, a, in, in some of the open group materials as well. Um, the operating model is really, and I'm going to assume, I'm not going to talk you through this, I'm going to assume that you have some uh, understanding of this, uh, this tool. Um, and its operating model canvas is very much trying to uh, be in the same genre as the business model canvas. Um, the operating model is the, the left-hand side, the back end, the how. Of the, of the business model canvas. So uh, if you just take the pictures, then the, the picture of an operating model canvas can be slotted in uh, instead of the pieces in the business model canvas. So instead of key partners, key activities, and key resources, 
you can slot in processes, organization, IT, um, you know, or information, uh, location, and suppliers as being the, the five pieces of, of the operating model canvas. Again, with the management system piece, to some degree, actually managing the whole business model canvas, not just the operating model canvas, uh, un underlying the whole, the whole uh, combination of canvases, including the financial model. So this is intended to be a build on the business model canvas tool. And rather like uh, um, Eve and Alex uh, uh, did a book on the front end, the, the customer model with a value proposition design book, you know, expanding the ideas there. This is an attempt to expand the ideas at the back end of the business model canvas. How do you create an operating model canvas? So let's say you wanted to use this in your, in your organization, whether it's for the IT or for some other part of the organization that you're doing, you're providing IT services to that you wanted to understand and, and, and help the, the people think about. And m my advice always is, is to start with the work that needs to be done to deliver the value proposition. So clearly you have to find out what is the value proposition, who is the customer of this part of the organization, um, what are we trying to do for that customer, what will make that, that customer or beneficiary happy, and what, is the, what are the work steps at a high level that are going to need to be done to make that smiley face at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the arrow. And it's a simple sort of manufacturing type example. You're going to have to design some stuff. You may have to purchase some stuff. You may have to do, uh, do some manufacturing or transform it into something. You're going to be selling and servicing it. And at the end, you're hoping to have a, a happy customer. And if, you're, if it's a customer outside the organization, then you're going to know that customer's happy because they're going to be paying you good money for, for your, your um, support. If it's an internal organization, it's always slightly harder to know whether you are really delivering to the customer, the beneficiary, what they want, because you don't necessarily have the monetary uh, um, uh, measure to know if they're getting what they want. Um, you then add to the canvas. So literally, this post-it note, stick it up on a, on a flip chart, you know, have an argument about what are the different steps, keep it at a high level, don't have more than five or six or seven, because you need to be able to keep it all in your mind at once, and anyway, you haven't got a lot of space, uh, deliberately. The great benefit of things like canvases is, is you're, limited to, you're limited in space, so you can't get too complex. You can only capture the highest level thoughts. Um, you then add on to that other stuff that is most important in your mind to the value proposition. So in this example, the proposition is, is low cost. So we're doing, trying to do something, and we're trying to do it low cost than our competitors. So then you're kind of working around the, the, the canvas, thinking about what is it that we have to do, how do we have to do it, what do we have to do particularly well in order to achieve that low cost objective? So in this case, in the information box, it would probably be we're going to need standard packages because we need to, if we're trying to be low cost, we're not going to have a lot of bespoke, uh, complicated uh, software. Um, you, we're probably going to have a functional organization structure because functional structures are normally lower cost than, um, than matrix structures or, or uh, divisionalized structures. Um, we're almost certainly going to outsource components to people who've got better economies of scale than we have. Um, we're going to probably be operating in low-cost operations, you know, and uh, low-rent areas where we've got low people cost or low, low building costs. So the co there's a connection here between the value proposition, what are we trying to do, and the canvas how, the elements of the how are we trying to do it. And the, the benefit of having this all on one page is you can see, start to see the connections. And, and you can get disconnects. So you can end up with, um, in the organization box, you know, we want really high quality people. And then in the location box, we want really cheap locations. And then you start to think, well, actually, is this going to work? How do we get high quality people in cheap locations? Because often the two are, uh, you know, high quality people are going to want to be in, in Amsterdam or London or somewhere. Um, they're not going to be that happy to be in, in, in uh, um, Indonesia, maybe. Um, uh, so you, you can start to see some of the disconnects that might cause you trouble with the finalization of your operating model. I'm going to give you a couple of illustrations 
Um, and then we're going to talk IT. Uh, this is my uh, business school, which is uh, Ashridge Business School, which is part of HALT International Business School. And HALT has three schools, um, basically three different value propositions to three different customer types, undergraduates, postgraduates, and executive. The core value chain, the work that needs to be done to deliver a, a, you know, a satisfied graduate at the end of these efforts um, uh, is, is fairly similar, but a little different in each of the, the schools. Um, and you know, at the very highest level, kind of that's all you need to lay out in that middle arrow of you know, if you're doing an operating model for Halt International Business School. Now, you then may add in a lot of other bits around, around those arrows, but we're not trying to make this over complex. So you can take a huge organization and you can make it look simple on, on paper. Um, clearly, when you are um, laying out those value service delivery chains, value chains, um, one of the immediate things that you start to think about is, you know, should all the marketing be combined? Should all the, uh, you know, across these different schools, should the, the, the housing um, of the students be combined across these business, uh, business uh, schools, across these, these different lines of business? And, and this way of laying out uh, the work that needs to be done helps you start thinking about those choices. You know, should the, um, the, should the teachers who are teaching on postgraduate report to the head of postgraduate, or should they report to the head of teaching across all three schools? Big issue. Um, and quite a few of them will teach in more than one school. So you know, how, do you, how do you deal with that? So um, simple can help you see the issues clearly and engage um, the uh, decision makers in a way that they feel comfortable to be engaged. In this particular case, um, HALT has global and cutting edge as core value propositions for all of its schools. Hence, it's located in Boston and London and so on. It has, for undergraduates, the core value proposition is employable. You're going to get a degree, but we want you to be more likely to get a job at the end of your degree than if you go to another school. Um, and for the uh, postgraduate and executive, then it's about thought leadership and, and practical. We're going to give you tools that will help you in the work that you do, as well as being thought-leading thought tools. And in order to deliver that, one can think about, you know, it has the locations box, obviously, is, is going to be important. You don't want to be in four or five locations around the world. Um, associate faculty happens to be very critical but because they're the people who bring in the practical experience into the classroom. Um, and uh, a chief academic officer is very important to make sure we have the thought leadership. Uh, and so you start to see some of the elements that are going to be critical to the, your, your operations at this you know, extraordinarily high level. We've only got you know, 20 thoughts on a, on a chart here, but we're already getting a sense of what's important in this, um, this business school. I'm going to show you a couple of other examples, but for timing reasons, um, I am uh, going to skip right over them, so I'm just going to give you sort of visual impressions before we get into the IT stuff. This is an HR function. Again, the, the visual impression should be here. There's quite a lot of stuff going on in that middle arrow. Um, and then you know, as you put other things on the canvas, you can start making connections and draw, draw connecting lines uh, and so on. Uh, and so it can be used in a very uh, sort of me messy but creative way. Um, let me give you a quick IT function example. Again, I'm not going to spend long on this. This is a, um, a financial services group um, in the Americas uh, operating in a lot of different countries. Uh, this is about their, their central I IT, um, and they very much have a, have a sort of central st set of work steps uh, designed to produce a value proposition which is lower group-wide IT costs, decentralized service, and group-wide solutions, which, could, which you could argue are partly for standardization and partly for, for lower costs. Um, and uh, and, and they, they follow pretty much the, the uh, IT for IT um, you know, standard uh, uh, value chain model in their... Um, uh, in, in their kind of posted notes down the, 
the central work to be done processes arrow. Um, and I'm going to shove a lot of other flip uh, post-it notes on here. I'm not going to go through them all, but if we just t were to take one, which is um, the, the uh, uh, I don't know if this pointer will probably not shine out that far away, but if we take the, the lower group cost, wide cost thought, which is this red star, and then we try and follow through what, what post-it notes are really important to delivering the, the lower uh, cost, we, can, we, we start to make connections with what we're trying to do and the way we are operating to get it done. A different way of thinking about an IT function um, would be to break it up into its different types of services. I think David in the next presentation is going to talk about family, service families, um, and this is, this is this, a, a similar thought. And uh, uh, you know, here the service families are you know, there's some kind of integrated enterprise service that we're offering. It's so going to be a communications service we're offering, an office system service we're offering, and be some digital support services we're offering. And, and what's the work steps for each of those? Who are the, who are the customers? Um, and then how do we think about that, that middle arrow? And as you can see here, we've got sort of IT business partners at one end and, and sort of IT governance and, and security and so on. Uh, at, at the other end as, as, as overlays around these kind of four different uh, service streams. Um, and uh, I want to use this a little bit to discuss some of the challenges that I think there are in, in IT operating model design. So I'm going to skip over a couple of slides and then we're going to get into some of the challenges. These will be available um, in the uh, uh, materials afterwards. Um, so, what are the challenges when designing an IT operating model? And forgive me, I'm not an IT, I've never worked in an IT function, so uh, I may not have this right, but I think I've got some outside in perspective that may be helpful to you. Um, first, IT strategy is critical to inform what are the best ways of thinking about your families of services what are the different service chains that we should be thinking about? And the IT for IT standard just gives you kind of one uh, service chain. But in, in practice, you're going to have different service chains. And so actually, how do we think about that? And the, the IT strategy should inform that. And if it doesn't, then there's a dialogue there before you get into detailed operating model work. At the same time, and actually working on the same issue, is what are the value propositions that we are offering the organization? And how do we think about the different value propositions we're offering in terms of service delivery chains to deliver the value propositions? And unless IT strategy answers those two questions, and of course lying behind that is the business strategy, it's quite hard to design the operating model. So, in my experience, from little I've been involved in, in, in IT ways, the IT strategy often doesn't actually give us a lot of clarity about those, those two issues uh, in a way that will then inform good operating model design. Um, thinking about the families of services, how to collect our different services into you know, four or five or six families that we can think of as, as value delivery chains. We can do that by customer type. So we could think of services to the business divisions and services to corporate functions. We can think about it uh, by application type, you know, integrated applications and non-integrated applications or standard applications and bespoke applications, because they're probably going to be require a slightly different set of work steps depending on those um, application types. We could think of it by service type, which is sort of how I uh, have laid out the, the chain in the, uh, in, the, in the visual. We can think about it you know, in terms of legacy versus new. Um, we can think about it um, in, in, this, in, in terms of strategic orientation. And there's a tool here that I, that I um, uh, teach on my, my course, but it's an old strategy tool, which is about or whether your operation is trying to be really innovative to get to be excellent through innovation, whether it's trying to be excellent through being really close and intimate with the, the, the customer or the user, 
and or whether it's trying to be excellent by being operationally efficient. Of course, you know, a lot of IT is trying to be excellent by being operating, operationally efficient, but not all. And so if we were to think about a lot of things that one's doing in the digital space, you're trying to be excellent by being, by being clever or by being really sensitive to the need of a particular uh, constituency with inside the organization. And, and, and you know, bespoke applications are really about a customer intimacy. Now, these different strategic orientations I know from organization design work are often better managed in different silos because you need different kinds of people and different kinds of culture to be good at an innovation activity than a uh, efficiency activity. So you know, is this a, a way of thinking about how we should structure the IT function? Um, a couple more um, things. The, the digital issue is a big one. McKinsey just came out with a big article saying that, um, that uh, uh, digital should not be separated from, from IT. Um, because it creates problems down, down the road if you do. Um, but it, it, how many different digital service chains should we be thinking about? Do you think about digital for the front end and digital for the back end as two different types of uh, service? Or is it all one or are there, are there 10? You know, what, how, how is, what's the right way to think about this? Um, my point about where does it make sense to combine across service chains? So you know, should, should we put all the support together for all the service chains in, in a one uh, support team? Should we have all of the procure and build together? Should we have all the, the plan together in terms of a strategy um, development? Or, or should we actually decentralize those into the service streams? These are, these are really important issues which will affect the way the IT operation runs and, and how effective it is. Um, and then there's the whole business partner point. You know. Is it possible to find any human beings who are capable of being good business partners across this uh, broad range of services? Uh, and uh, um, you know, HR have a huge problem getting HR business partners to be competent across compensation and benefits and talent and organization development and recruitment and, um, uh, uh, and other areas. Uh, it, that I'm sure that the same problem exists in, in IT. So there is a, a bunch of quite interesting, intellectually challenging and important to performance uh, issues that need to be uh, wrestled with in the, at, the, at a high level in the, uh, your operating model thinking. Um, and, and then we can go on round, and, I, and I'm running out of time here, um, about these uh, uh, different other parts of the operating model canvas that, are, uh, that raise some tricky uh, design, operating model design issues. Um, behind each of these spaces on the canvas are, is some tooling, some, some, some frameworks, some methods that you can use to explore um, you know, your location's footprint, um, you know, your um, uh, you know, like there's, some, there's a tool called the, the organization modeling tool, which is useful for helping you think about organization structure, um, decision grids for helping you think about decision authorities, process grids for helping you think about process ownership, um, supplier matrices for helping you think about the supplier relationships. So each of these um, spaces on the canvas can be expanded out so that you don't have to rely just on the one page. <laughs> Version, you can then take each of those pieces and expand it into a couple of pages and end up with a 10-page with a version. But the thought here is do a lot of your thinking at the one or 10-page level rather than the 100 or 1,000-page th level. Because at that, at the one or 10-page level, you can engage people. You can, you can engage your customers. You can engage your, your top team. You're going to have plenty of disagreements but you're able to debate the big stuff. Um, and if you can get agreement about the big stuff, you are then going to find it much easier to, to, to put together the detail in, a, in an aligned way. Um, my hunch, my, my, my thought, and I've been sort of wrestling with, with this uh, <clears throat> for a few months now, um, and it's influenced by the work I've done in other functions other than, than IT. But my 
hunch is that uh, there's a performance leap opportunity in the IT function. If you structure less by plan, build, do, or whatever the right terminology is, and, and more by value service delivery chain, yeah, value chain. Uh, and so thinking through what those are, in my view, is likely to be where some of the gold lies. Questions? There's some stuff, if you want to follow up any of my work, there's some, my email address, my, um, my uh, uh, book website, and my, my blog. Thank you, Andrew.